May we now have Congressman Richie Torres step forward and administer the oath of office to Antonio Delgado as Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Antonio Ramon Delgado, do solemnly swear. I, Antonio Ramon Delgado, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of the Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Let me just start off um, by saying I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I want to thank uh, my family and the community that raised me, my parents, my church, my teachers, my coaches. I want to thank my, my soulmate, Lacey. Yeah. for always grounding me and for the extraordinary colors that you bring to the vision that is ours. To my sons, Maxwell and Coltrane, or Maxie and Coley, thank you for inspiring me every single day. Uh, to my friend and former colleague, Richie Torres, thank you for your dynamic and forward-thinking leadership To our amazing Attorney General, Tis James, and to our controller, DiNapoli, and of course to our Majority Leader, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, and the Speaker, Speaker Hasty, and the Majority Leader, Schumer, and to all the elected officials uh, gathered here today. A lot of history is being made today. You can clap it up for that. I stand up here, a black man with Cape Verdean and Latino roots, the first for the state, set to serve alongside the first woman ever elected to governor of New York, Governor Kathy Hochul. <laughs> governor Hochul, you are a trailblazer. It is profoundly meaningful for children all across this state to look up and see a woman leading New York into the future. And I am humbled by the opportunity to serve alongside of you, so let me just say right from the start, thank you. Thank you. Yes, history is indeed being made today, but what does it mean? What does it mean to make history if it doesn't lead to real change in the present? And change doesn't happen unless you get things done. Now that happens when you foster cooperation rather than conflict. Change happens when you work together, all of us. And I believe that it is this day-to-day -day practical work, born of a commitment to excellence, responsiveness, and effectiveness that in fact leads to a world of possibilities. Another way to put it, what good is it to dream of what's possible if you're not willing to do the work? When I look back, 
When I look back at my time in Congress as the first person of color to represent upstate New York, I don't recall too many of my constituents making note of my history-making achievement. Uh, and to be clear, uh, I got around quite a bit. You know, my old district stretched nearly 8,000 square miles, was bigger than Connecticut and Rhode Island combined, made up of 11 counties, 11, and the eighth most rural congressional seat in the entire country out of 435. A lot of farms, a lot of small businesses. But like I said, I got around. Over 65 town halls during my two terms, with multiple town halls in all 11 counties. And on top of that, I made sure to visit every farm I can get to, every small business, every school, every hospital, to connect with people. Because to do the work, you have to listen. And not just to those who agree with you, but to everyone. And as I made the rounds, connected with folks, and tried to find common ground, what I heard more often than not was a deep desire for me to deliver results. Folks appreciated that I showed up because it demonstrated that I actually cared enough to show up and listen. But that's only half the battle. The other half is what you do with that information to better the lives of people. And over time, I went about the business of trying to do that. 18 bills while I was in Congress were signed into law. 10 under President Trump, eight under President Biden. Bills that support our veterans, our farmers, our small businesses. Bills that support workers who want to continue their education. Bills that make sure our children can, clean, can drink clean water. Bills that empower American-based manufacturing. And bills that got federal dollars directly to our counties and towns, like my Direct Support for Communities Act, which secured over $10 billion to New York counties, cities, towns, and villages for economic relief in the face of COVID. New Yorkers communicated with me regularly about these results. And while folks were certainly excited about the history I made by virtue of my election, what they had the most to say about was the work. Now, I share all of this because I want you all to know that the work we do is ultimately what matters. If our government is to truly be for the people, it must produce for the people which includes all people, the underserved, the overlooked, the communities that don't have the resources to hire lobbyists or pursue special interests. These are real people in real communities that truly feel the impact when government fails to be effective and inclusive. As I've said before, New York deserves a lieutenant governor who's working day and night to make lives better for working people and their families. Upstate, downstate, it doesn't matter. We all want the same things, security, family, and opportunity. The key is to listen to New Yorkers from all walks of life and then do the work to get the job done. And to that end, I'm excited to focus on economic development in my role as chair of the Regional Economic Development Councils. It is certainly a priority of mine to partner with the council members to establish pathways to prosperity for all communities. I come into this role already having done work on infrastructure, economic development, and job creation all throughout New York. I will continue to focus on making sure local communities have economic development resources and importantly can decide what to do with economic development funds. This work includes a focus on the nexus between agricultural development upstate and critical markets downstate. I will continue with these efforts and more, and I will do it from a place of love. Love, yes, love. Yes, the work certainly matters, but how we do the work is just as important, and it must be done from a place of love. As New Yorkers, we have grown distant from each other, more isolated and separated as inequities continue to deepen. This has made us less compassionate and less understanding of one another. Instead, we are growing more rigid and hardened in our respective points of view. 
Essential democratic norms like mutual tolerance and self-restraint have withered away. We need to reconnect and strengthen our collective bond as New Yorkers. We need to heal together and put humanity back into our interactions with one another. And I want to be a part of that healing. I want to be a part of that healing process. I do. I understand what the process needs. It needs love. It needs compassion. It needs responsibility. It needs accountability. It needs capacity, a capacity to care. And it needs the willingness to hope. This is why I'm grateful that Governor Hochul has asked me to chair the newly established Hate and Bias Prevention Unit within the state's Division of Human Rights. The unit... The unit is charged with leading public education and outreach efforts to promote acceptance, inclusion, tolerance, and understanding of diversity. We cannot allow ignorance, fear, and hatred to damage the enormous amount of work we've done to move our state forward. The partnerships that we're building within communities and across the state will ensure that what we know to be true will prevail, which is that love always prevails over hate. This is my commitment. This is my commitment to all of you to do the work, to do it on behalf of all New Yorkers in an effective and inclusive manner and to do it with love and compassion. And how fortunate am I to be able to do it, this incredible work, alongside the first woman to sit in the state's highest office. I just want to say in closing, I am so fortunate. I said at the very top that I was grateful, and I really am. Looking out at all of you today, you realize how much this really matters and how much leadership really matters. And to be able to serve alongside somebody who is not just a great example for little girls and little boys all across our state and country, but also someone who's a true public servant, someone who leads from the heart with empathy and compassion and great strength. It means the world to me. And I cannot wait. I tell you, I can't to really get down to the business of good, thoughtful, caring, effective, compassionate, transparent, accountable government alongside And I'll just tell you, we're going to do all we can as we step into this history-making moment to make the absolute best of this moment together for the betterment of our great state, the Empire State, New York. God bless you, God bless New York, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.